So in this session, I want to show you the most amazing mashed potatoes. I, I sort of got the idea from, from three things. Now, first, when I was young, I had a cookbook from the Trago brothers in France. And they made gnocchi, which was sort of quite unusual. They baked the potatoes and then they needed very little flour in the gnocchi itself, which sort of gave those gnocchi a really nice potato flavor. Then sort of traveling a bit around in Italy, you know, I saw a lot of sort of Italians doing that from baked potatoes too. But I still didn't I sort of have to didn't click that it could do that with mashed potatoes. And then when I ate at El Bulli years and years ago, they had a sort of a signature dish there, which was potato gnocchi. And then they made a soup out of the roasted potato skin, which just tasted like this, you know, intense flavor of baked potatoes. So I saw then it sort of clicked for me. And I thought if I combine all of that, if I roast the potatoes at the right temperature, where they get sort of a really nice baked potato flavor, and then you take the flesh out and then you turn it into mash and then you sort of basically dehydrate them and it's almost like a dried fruit or semi, think about semi-dried tomatoes, that's it, you basically do that to tomatoes and so that you could actually add much more cream and much more butter to it and make them even richer. So the one thing you really need to think about it, those potatoes can be very filling, they soak up a lot, but really it is for me the ultimate way of eating mashed potatoes because the flavor is just so much bigger and the texture is just so much creamier. So I'm sure it's not a mashed potato you would do every day, but for a special occasion, that is definitely the way to go. So obviously you need to get the right potato and that will be a really good mashing potato. So something like uh, this array, something very floury, a good baking potato is just sensational. It's very important to get the temperature right. So. I would turn my oven up to at least 180 degrees fan force or up to 200 degrees fan force. So I get that really nice roasting flavor into the potato, you know, that baked potato flavor. That's what you want. So then cook them basically until they're completely cooked through. So that could take you up to an hour, depending on the size of the potatoes. So you rather want to overcook them than undercook them. Now the good thing is obviously the potatoes will dry out while the roast so you're already gonna start working with a very very dry potato mass to start with so check the potatoes by poking a knife through the potato and if you find that there's no resistance or the same resistance all the way through your potatoes peel take them out so you have to process them fairly hot because you do not want the potatoes to go cold because you cannot make mashed potatoes from cold potatoes so Anytime we make mashed potatoes, the potatoes have to be really, really hot. So I'm probably going to burn my fingers here. As you can see, the potatoes are still fairly hot. There's no two ways to do that. You either scrape them out with a spoon or sometimes the potatoes will allow you to peel them. So either way, that works for you. I will show you both ways now. So I will just start to scrape it out with a spoon. Works pretty well. And as I say, the skins, do not throw them out. You could actually infuse them into stock to make you an absolutely amazing stock for risotto or so, which you get the sort of the roast potato flavor into your stock. So just scrape it out. Try to keep it in a warm pan or into a warm tray. The oven is still hot anyway, so put the tray in there. So it's very important to not to drop the temperature. And that's every time when you work with potatoes. Now potatoes, once they're cold, you cannot turn them into mash anymore. You cannot turn them into gnocchi anymore. Because once they go cold, the starch changes. And when the starch has changed, they're really just going to be good for salads and things like so. So it's a little tip that you need to consider. If you process potatoes, keep them hot until they're processed. So just really scrape out all the potatoes from the skin. And you obviously will need a little bit more potatoes for that because you're going to have quite a bit of loss. It's almost like a roasting potato. We just peel it off like I do here. Because, you know, in the baking process, you will lose some moisture. Probably up to 15 to 20%. So drop my skins into potatoes it's a little bit painful as you can imagine but you know chefs handle a lot of hot things and it's not that the skin is thick on their hands it's just 
the pain pressure is is much higher so just can tolerate that sort of hot things in your hand and you will know they're not hot enough to burn you and you just get a bit used to the pain so just press them through a sieve now just like we did last time and this time because you work with a much denser potato it will not it's a bit harder to get them through the sieve as you will notice just because they're so dense so of course I want to put them through a sieve a second time just like I shown you in the second session or probably even three times so if you find it struggling a bit too much with that process you can always put them through a sieve after you added the cream and after you added the milk I could have done it in a second session too but as I'm trying to show you is each session a little bit or different ways or different approaches to the same topic I will show you today how to put it through the sieve after I added the cream and the milk so again put it in a pot make sure the pot is hot or switch it on in a sort of a medium heat but you can see this is literally a super super dense mash so now I add the cream my pot is on a medium heat a little bit of salt because I need to keep the temperature up so that the uh, mushing the, the butter and the cream will really combine really really well with the potatoes and now I just get a spatula again and I just work that in no whisk because a whisk can change the starch it's the same if I put it in a food process and pulse it or blend it for too long the mashed potato becomes very gooey so it's very important that you just work that by hand if you find the potatoes don't absorb the butter that well well then you go off and then you add a little bit more cream or in that case you can of course add milk as well because you worked you, you lost so much moisture already so add a little bit more cream just because it looks a bit to me that the butter doesn't fully absorb so it needs a bit more water that's basically what you do with a chocolate ganache as well or anytime something splits often just a little bit of water will just make all the difference and now I'm gonna mash it the second time so it looks really good can you see how firm that is plus what I have in there is obviously that really really amazing baked potato flavor now if I want to go further I can add a little bit of truffle oil or any sort of other flavor like some chopped herbs a bit of parmesan cheese I could of course replace the butter with some olive oil but I still would need a cream or some form of milk so I put it through a sift the second time and now I just keep working it and it's really really firm that is like super super dense potato so you don't gonna need much of that of course because they're gonna be very very filling Let's just look at it how firm that thing is so I also want to show you how to plate it so that you see the difference between those three mashes I made just look how firm that is so now our first mash you can see it's it's a really good mash but it's when you compare it to the other two it's not as firm so it's nice and creamy still holds up really well better than most mash potatoes I'm seeing you know especially if there's milk in it and the potatoes are overcooked in water it just sort of get really flat on the plate so look at the second one how much firmer that is so that was the mash we made with the steamed potatoes and now the mash with the baked potatoes and that's like super super thick super firm so I hope you liked that if you liked my video please subscribe and the last tip I want to give you is those potato skins of those of those potatoes. You can basically throw them back into the oven, add a little bit of oil on it, and you could fry them longer and eat them, or you can grind them up and serve it as a sort of a potato soil to a dish, or you could infuse it into a stock like for risotto or so, and through that get that really nice baked potato flavor in another dish. Mm -hmm.